So uh, Open uh, GL Shader is a program and uh, shader is specified uh, as a source code which is which means it's a plain text file. So there are different shading languages uh, that are suppo supported by graphics graphics cards uh, and industry. So uh, CG C for graphics is developed by Nvidia and Microsoft and used by DirectX. Um, HLSL is uh, used by Microsoft in Direct 3D. And GLSL is OpenGL shading language, uh, very much like C programming language. So your program needs at least two shaders, vertex and fragment shaders, but uh, it can use many more. So the combination of different shaders um, can be used in the same program when it executes. So when the shaders are compiled, they are com compiled in the, into their binary form already in memory. So let's uh, see some examples of uh, shaders. Uh, I'll try to show you shaders from our second laboratory exercise right here. And I'll uh, show you their code. This is the vertex shader and this is the fragment shader. So these are very simple shaders. I'll show them side by side for you and we'll talk a little bit about them. So the vertex shader right here, this is an example of the vertex shader. Um, its responsibility is to change the position of every vertex. And uh, it may also do additional tasks, like for instance, it can determine the color of the vertex. Because every such vertex eventually uh, will be transformed into a series of fragments. And the attributes that we can generate for every um, a vertex can be passed over to the fragment shader. This is an example of the fragment shader, uh, which is responsible for uh, assigning uh, final colors. So right here, fragment shader determines the color of each pixel and calculates lighting using um, information about the material of the surface, the normal vectors and textures that we may also optionally supply uh, to our graphic uh, graphic cards. So I'd like to jump back to uh, triangulation and this is an example of a 3D shape. And uh, just a quick um, look at these two uh, shaders uh, that uh, we uh, say that uh, the vertex shader executes for every vertex present in our geometry. So we find a way to load this geometry into the graphics card and render the image. I think I will actually rearrange this uh, a little bit different. I'll just move this to the horizontal group like this so we can see both of these shaders at the same time. And you can see that uh, both of these shaders are using a very uh, C-like um, um, syntax. And this is uh, written in uh, the language that we call GLSL. All right, so this is, this is our geometry. I'll make it a little bit larger for our demonstration. Like this. And uh, so what is going to be happening is that all this geometry that we have somewhere in, in our file, or maybe we already calculated this in computer memory, uh, we're going to load this uh, into, into graphics card. And each vertex that we have in our geometry with the coordinates x, y, z is going to be processed by this uh, vertex shader. And each vertex, each uh, x, y, and z coordinates like this, 2, 1, and minus 1, is going to be supplied um, uh, to the shader, to this vertex shader, uh, in form of vector of four floating point numbers. Uh, simply, this is an array of four floating point numbers. And um, the first three are x, y, and z. 
coordinates and the fourth coordinate is called W. We will talk about this uh, later on. So this specific uh, uh, shader does not make any transformations. It does not rotate vertices, it does not scale them, it does not uh, move them in space. All that it does is basically taking whatever the input is and assigns it to GL position. So GL position is a global variable in graphics memory which is um, assumed to be the output of the vertex shader. So essentially every vertex that will be supplied, so the vertex shader is a program which will be executed for every single uh, vertex in our geometry like this, all of them will pass through the shader and we, in this example, just give them uh, to, to the output. Um, such a pass-through shader actually has to stay within the boundaries of minus one to one because that's, um, uh, that's the requirement when we do our modeling transformation. Uh, the initial geometry has to fit into this range from minus one to to plus one. More about this later. But uh, uh, right now the important thing is that this is going to be assigned and this becomes the output of um, this stage in our uh, graphics uh, pipeline. Uh, fragment shader. Um, so the next uh, step here is that uh, um, uh, first, uh, our vertices will be assembled into geometric shapes, triangles in our case, right? So, so this will be an example of one of the tri triangles right here, right? So this uh, triangle uh, that will be uh, assembled is going to be rasterized, so it will be broken down to a certain number of fragments and that depends on the resolution of your graphics card. Okay, so it will be broken to individual fragments and remember fragments are pixel candidates. And every such fragment will be then uh, uh, supplied as um, input uh, to the fragment shader. Right now, by the way, I don't have any input declared here because here we actually um, we will um, we will run this fragment shader for every fragment regardless uh, whether we uh, declare any input or not. Uh, but in this shader, we declare the output vector of four floating uh, floating point numbers. And again, this is just a very simple. Uh, array of four floating numbers, that's what VEC4 stands for, floating point number, four, uh, four of them, and this will be our red, green, and blue uh, components, and this is the alpha, the transparency indicator. And all that we do here, we assign to F color a hard-coded red component, and then green and blue are zero, and this is one, which is which means totally opaque, not transparent. So that should result in uh, every fragment colored as a red, right? So this is pure, pure red component 1.0. And uh, just a reminder that um, when we um, uh, generate colors, uh, the um, allowable range for color components is from 0 to 1. So 0 mean, means the lowest intensity, like 0 intensity, and 1 being the highest intensity um, uh, that your uh, hardware can generate on your screen. 